European basketball fans know how legendary Nando De Colo has been in the last decade. Despite being one of the best players in the Euroleague, De Colo never made it in the NBA. So how did someone so talented struggle so much in the NBA? Let's take a look at why Nando De Colo failed in the NBA. It's not always easy to impress NBA scouts from across the pond, but that is exactly what De Colo was doing when he was just 19, making his professional debut in 2006 with Cholet. With Cholet, De Colo developed into a very interesting combo guard. He was seen as a slightly late bloomer, considering De Colo did not come through the ranks of the French national team. But his draft profile highlighted a few things the NBA teams would be a fan of. He was a skilled guard who had solid passing and scoring ability to be a good role player in France. While his athleticism was not ideal, at 6 foot 5, De Colo had decent size for his position. Not necessarily seen as a high potential guy, De Colo was still seen as someone who could become a good player in the NBA. It was those attributes that led San Antonio Spurs to draft him in the second round of 2009 draft, two picks ahead of future Spurs teammate Paddy Mills. Despite that, De Colo signed a three-year deal with Valencia the same summer, and it was clear he would not go straight to the NBA. The three years with Valencia ended in 2012, after which De Colo announced he would not be resigning and would be heading to the NBA to play for the Spurs. In the first season, head coach Greg Popovich gave the Frenchman a lot of time to develop. De Colo headed into a locker room where he would learn from fellow countryman Tony Parker. Despite Spurs having a deep roster, De Colo still played 72 games in his rookie season. He averaged just 3.8 points per game and only 1.9 assists, not exactly the start to his career he was looking for. And in the playoffs, the French point guard saw his minutes diminish even further. The following season was more of the same. With Tony Parker and Mano Ginobili ahead of him, De Colo really struggled to find minutes. So much that having averaged just 11.6 minutes per game, De Colo was traded away to the Toronto Raptors in exchange for Austin Day. It was not a move that was massively successful for De Colo, as he played less than 30 games for the Raptors before returning to Europe. De Colo deserves credit for completely rebuilding his career in Europe since leaving the NBA in 2014. In the time he has been away from the league, De Colo is now a two-time Euroleague champion, Euroleague MVP, and is now the second leading scorer in Euroleague history. So how did a player, who showed he has NBA quality, struggle so much when he got the chance in the league? Well, there are a few different reasons behind De Colo's struggle in the NBA. Being drafted by the San Antonio Spurs might seem like a brilliant move for your career. For Nando De Colo, it gave him the opportunity to learn from some of the best guards in the league who had huge amount of experience. The thing that people forget about is that the system that the Spurs run is not always perfect for every player. Before coming to the league, it was clear that Nicola was a very good pick and roll player who was accustomed to a high usage rate. But when he joined the Spurs, Nicola did not get the usage he was looking for. Instead, he was often a spot up shooter for the team. It was a role he was fine at, but it was clear to anyone watching those games that being a spot up shooter was not the right style for the French guard. Being played out of position, De Colo could not find the consistency he was looking for and coughed up a lot of turnovers. He was second on the Spurs roster for turnovers per 36 minutes, despite being incredibly third for assists and 15th for points per 36 minutes. Those turnovers would have been understandable for most coaches, as players who are new to the NBA often need more than a year to understand the league. But in Greg Popovich's system, that was a real NBA title contender, those turnovers could not stand. That's why we saw De Colo's minutes diminish in Spurs. He continued to be asked to play off the ball, a role which he was just not really suited to. There was not any sort of pick and roll offense for De Colo to take advantage of. In a team like the San Antonio Spurs, everyone is asked to adapt their game and their role to suit the team. It helped to make the Spurs multiple time champions in the NBA, but that system also stunted the growth of Nando De Colo. When it was clear that De Colo's career with the Spurs was over, a move to Toronto seemed like a really good one. They were a good young team, with young duo DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry looking incredibly exciting. There was hope that De Colo could add much needed depth to the Toronto squad. It was always going to be difficult for De Colo to make an impact right away, as he was traded mid-season. So, in the 9 minutes per game that De Colo played for the Raptors, he was not able to put up massive amount of performances. But it looked like he was at least impressing head coach Dwayne Casey. 
In an interview during the season, Casey called his court vision uncanny. So, it was a slight surprise when Decolo played just 4 minutes in the playoffs for the Raptors. He could have impacted the game and be a ball hander off the bench for Toronto. Instead, he was barely used by the Raptors. In the offseason, Raptors wanted to give Decola another chance, but the French guard saw how little game time he'd gotten the previous season and decided to return to Europe. With the Raptors re-signing most of their guards, Decola knew any minutes were going to be hard to come by. Players reject contract offers in the NBA all the time, but not many of them do it in favor of a move away from the league. Decola would have noticed that in 2014 offseason, Raptors were also giving out contracts to a lot of different guards. Kyle Lowry was given a huge $48 million contract, while Grievous Vasquez also signed a new one. DeMar DeRozan wasn't going anywhere, and the Raptors had brought in Lou Williams that offseason to be the main man off the bench. Minutes would have been difficult for Decola to come by, but did he possibly give up on the league too quickly? Instead of trying to win his minutes in training camp and practice, he chose to go back to Europe. It ended up being a smart move, as Decola is now one of the greatest Euroleague players of all time. His struggles in the NBA have led some fans to ask whether Nando De Cola was ever good enough for the league. I think it's pretty clear that De Cola was always good enough to play in the NBA. But when you are drafted into a system that so heavily focuses on team success, it's not easy for individuals to grow like De Cola needed to. After Nando De Cola, De Cola against Johnson pulls up 20 footer, he's good!